Hello ladies and gentlemen, as you can see I'm wearing my Gunther attire from X. Go check him out. Um, but today is September 11th, 2024, um, which is a sad day in U.S. history. But it's also a day that there's a lot of information missing from. Um, just, there's lots, lots of information. I'm going to go over a little bit of it. We're going to talk about a couple of things. Um, we're also going to talk about the Constitution. Like I said, on this channel, we're going to read this out loud. Now, why don't you guys let me know in the comments. Do you want me to read it live or read it and then you guys can comment afterwards? Let me know in the comments what you think about that. But what I want to talk about today is September 11th, 2001. A lot of people know some of the things that have you know don't add up and there are a lot of people who don't know some of the things that don't add up so we're gonna talk about that a little bit sadly on September 11th 2977 people perished um, from the attacks now most of those people that perished during those attacks were first responders firefighters, police officers, uh, and so on and so forth. So the Twin Towers were a great big set of buildings in New York City, as well as another building that was just off to the side, Building 7. Okay, These were government buildings. Or the Building 7 was a government building. They rented a lot of space in there. It was kind of like a secondary uh, pentagon where they could um, basically run the world or whatever, the U.S., from that building, okay? Um, the Twin Towers, on a daily average, had 50,000 people working there every day. 50,000 people, okay? There was more than 140,000 people who visited the Twin Towers daily. Okay, with a max capacity in those buildings of 140,000. Building 7 had a max capacity of 25,000 people. Okay? Now, like I said, don't get me wrong. The events that took place on September 11th were devastating and horrible. And loss of life sustained to the first responders and the medical personnel was horrible. But... Do you see the difference in numbers here? We 2,977 people perished, okay? This is just talking about the towers, okay? 50,000 people worked at that building, both buildings. 25,000 people worked at Building 7, okay? And then let's look at the aircraft. They said that they were Boeing 747s. Each one of those planes could hold 366 people. There was four planes, that's 1,464 people, yeah, all together, that could have been on those planes, okay? That's almost the number of people who perished on September 11th. 1,464 could fit on those planes. Now, you'll see that I'm making a point here, and... Uh, it's it's not a a point that anybody wants to make because nobody wants to see the see the truth in things they want to take what we hear and just go with it and that's right and that's accurate and we don't think that our government would lie to us but as we're learning in today's world that is not the case right right so Basically, four planes were hijacked, okay? Two hit each tower, or, or one hit each tower. One hit the Pentagon, and one hit a field in Pennsylvania where it crash-landed. Um, they believed that that one was heading to Washington, but did not make it, okay? Um, so let's look at a couple of things that were going on on September 11th or the day before, um, if you will. September 10th, 2001, Donald Rumsfeld 
had made an announcement that 2.4 trillion dollars went missing and they were investigating where that went missing and in that exact part of the building in the Pentagon where they were investigating that is where that plane hit or supposedly hit okay interesting that's an interesting fact right that's wow that's coincidence what I mean <laughs> They lost $2.4 trillion and a plane crashed, hit that part of the building, and now we have no record of it, what happened with it, okay? Um, also, in the Pentagon, where that plane hit, the first pictures that were released weren't even the size of an airplane, a Boeing 747. But second of all, they have reinforced walls in each layer of the Pentagon and somehow in the back of the building um, where the first three walls are there was a complete circle almost like a missile or something of that nature had hit and shot out the other side they say that it was the plane and it went all the way through which anybody that knows anything about planes they're built out of light wood aluminum uh, the fuselage is you know not very strong to break through a basically nuclear wall that's made to withstand that kind of stuff okay uh, so that's a coincidence that was a coincidence that happened on that day um, another coincidence is that the planes they crashed into the towers and because of jet fuel these buildings collapsed within the footprint of themselves just like and it didn't take long at all I think it was a couple of minutes collectively between all of them and they fell directly down on themselves uh, eliminating concrete uh, destroying the black box which is indestructible destroying pretty much all of the evidence that would show what happened except for the hijackers passport that was left uh, it blew out of the window in the explosion and was on the ground and they were able to pick that up and they knew instantly that it was al-qaeda it was uh, linked to Osama bin Laden, and uh, that was the start of the war um, in Afghanistan and Iraq for 23 years. Well, actually, it was 22 years because we had a botched pullout. Uh, well, it was 21 years because the botched pullout was a few years ago, but uh, where we left $80 billion of our equipment over there. But uh, that's a whole different story for another day. Um, but anyways, on that day, September 11th, 2001, our government were doing a couple of war games. One of them was called Global Guardian, and the other one was called Project Vigilance. What were the war games, you ask? Oh, well, the war games were to fly our F-16 jets like 300 nautical miles away from their collective bases in New York City and pretend that a plane was going to hit the Twin Towers and they would see how fast they could respond. No, I'm not making this up. This, this was literally what was going on the day that hijackers hijacked the planes and crashed them into the towers. Okay? That literally happened. They were playing war games. Global Guardian and Project Vigilance. You can look it up. It's not anything that I'm making up here. Okay? So that was going on. So that is weird all by itself. Um... Like I said in previous videos, the plane that crashed in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, completely disintegrated into the dirt. No whatsoever of the plane, the bodies, the anything. You can go back through my videos and you can look at another comparison video I showed you of a plane crashing and a plane crashing and it doesn't look even close to the same. So these are all anomalies that happened that day that don't make a lot of sense. And almost any interview that you see from September 11, 2001, of people that were in that building, they talk about hearing explosions. 
blast, like it was a controlled demolition, like it was brought down on purpose. Um, later in um, investigations and things that people had done on their own accord uh, from the dust and debris that they could get from other apartments because no one was allowed to investigate at Ground Zero, uh, they found thermite, which makes a lot of sense. If you know about thermite, thermite is a, a type of uh, explosive that when it explodes, it can eat through metal, okay? They found traces of that. Um, there was also millions of dollars worth of gold housed in the bottom of the Twin Towers that was never recovered, okay? Um, so these are just all anomalies that don't make a lot of sense. Um, even Mayor Rudy Giuliani uh, sent all of the scrap metal from when them buildings came down he sold it to China for the lowest possible amount of money he could get, and it was all took over there and destroyed. Well, where did something like that happen before? Um, that would be the JFK assassination. When that happened, they totally dismantled that car, destroyed it, and then rebuilt it. Why would someone do that? And why would they not let anybody investigate? Makes no sense, doesn't it? Well, let's look at Osama bin Laden, the guy who was responsible for all of this. He was a CIA operative. Like, he worked for our CIA. His daughter was dating John Legend for a long time. Okay? Um, so this guy that is supposed to be, like, the number one worst criminal, did all of this, had it all planned out, is friends with people who are supposed to be protecting us so there's a, a show there's a three-part series i don't know if you can find it anymore it's out there uh it's called loose change and it was shot by dylan avery a young kid at the time who was just basically asking the same questions that we all are still today after 23 years we're still wondering what <laughs> happened and the reason that these things are more prevalent today and there's more questions today and we're we're seeing a lot of things that don't make a lot of sense is because there's a cell phone in everybody's hand there's a camera on every street there is x which will allow you to tell the truth there are several places that you can get these things out now and it's difficult for the people who are in charge because they don't like that. They don't like you to tell the truth or to talk about anything of the sorts. They would like it to go away and be hidden. That's why with JFK, the vid, uh, September 11th, they've sealed these records that their investigation that they did, their independent investigation, have all been sealed for 75 years. Now, why would someone do that? Well, because by the time we're able to investigate that and actually look into what happened in 75 years, any of the people involved in that are not going to be here. So, that is the only thing I can come up with for that. If you have another reason why you think that they would lock it up for 75 years, let me know. So far, They've had to extend it a little bit further because obviously Biden has outlived that 75 years and he just keeps going. So uh, they had to, you know, rethink a few things on that one. But 75 years. They asked for the vid investigation to be locked up for 150 years. But that was shot down by a Supreme Court justice who said, no, that's not going to fly. So... Them are just a few questions. Uh, like I said, I could talk all day about the September 11th deal. There's a lot of things people don't know about that situation, and we will get into some more videos about that later. But I also wanted to talk about, um, like I've told you many times, I wrote a book called We the Peasants, an 8th Century Stronghold, okay? Because my belief is that we are all still peasants today okay we nothing changed from when there was kings and queens to now presidents congress and senate
The only thing that has changed is they have made some fancy names for everything. Um, they make you think that you can vote for an elected official and your vote will be heard and your voice will be heard and that they have your best interest at hand. I don't think that's accurate and I was looking through a timeline just a little bit ago and I don't know if you will notice any of these dates but let's take a look at them. George III of Great Britain was the monarchy of the US, the basically the king, okay, and he considered the US part of his ruling class or whatever and obviously the Revolutionary War took place and in 1783 that was all done and over with okay now you come back to the United States and in July 4th 1776 the Declaration of Independence was written okay stay with me okay and then we had the Constitution that was written on May 14th 1787 okay now mind you that king was the king until 1783 okay now our first president George Washington was elected into office April 30th 1789 okay it just happens to be that in March 4th 1789 Congress and Senate were established okay so if we take that into context you look at those dates they were putting something together obviously and what could have happened what were these people thinking now mind you we had a king and we had the richest of the rich for that time all sitting around thinking to themselves you know what these peasants are growing in population and they're getting out of control wanting freedoms and 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 rights and all of this stuff and we don't like it what can we do what can we do oh we can put together a government and tell them that they're going to be free that they can vote that we will count their vote and that we will have their best interest at heart and we will do everything for the American people. Has that been the case since that's happened? I know obviously like I said it takes a little bit it's a little little sour for some people when they hear some of this stuff because for many years there weren't cell phones. There weren't cameras everywhere. And the news stations and newspapers were all bought and paid for. So everything that you got to hear and see was controlled. So it's only now that people get to realize these things that are happening. And what is really taking place. This book we the Peasants, an 8th century stronghold, literally delves into some, I mean, just <laughs> some. There's a lot. There's a ton that, I mean, I probably write dictionaries based on, you know, what has took place over the years. But just a prime example of this system that I'm talking about right here and the dates and the times, they say that there has been an even number of Democrats to Republicans, um, presidents throughout history. But just recently, okay, uh, the Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, um, got voted out. And the Democrats wanted to put forth George Bush Jr. That is interesting. I mean, if you're listening to me right now, tell me that's not interesting. That's interesting because you have a bunch of Democrats who are pushing and fighting to get a hardcore Republican as the Speaker of the House. Interesting, right? Very interesting. 
And just recently, within the last couple of days, over 200 known hardcore staunch Republicans have came out in full support of Kamala Harris. That is weird, isn't it? Isn't that weird? To think that we... Remember, you have two, two sides, the Republican and the Democrats, and you have independent. Now, all these years, we have thought, and it's been told to us, that, that these are the sides you can vote for. You can vote independent, you can vote Republican, you can vote Democrat. And your vote counts. Make sure you get out and vote. Make sure you are voting for the person that you want to be in office, right? Okay, well, if that's the case, when George Bush Jr. was the president of the United States, and now all of these hardcore Republicans and Democrats are, well, yeah, the Democrats are wanting George Bush Jr., to be the Speaker of the House, and they are voting for Kamala Harris, <clears throat> who was installed, by the way, which, uh, per the Constitution, she's supposed to be voted in as the delegate, and then uh, that didn't happen. She was just installed into the position, and then they transferred something like $200 million from the Biden campaign to her campaign, which is not supposed to happen either, because if you remember... Donald Trump was indicted for moving $40,000 of his campaign money to his attorney. Um, so, I just want you guys to think about that for a brief minute or for quite some time. These Democrats want George Bush Jr., who lives in Texas, who is supposedly a hardcore, staunch Republican, this is the man that they wanted to put forth, and they wanted to bring him back as a possibility uh, to be in, you know, Congress and Senate, uh, to run the Speaker of the House position. So, having that being said, that we've, we're learning that Democrats are all for George Bush all of a sudden, that makes you wonder, in September of 2001 when he was the president and all of this took place uh, the towers fell and we went to war for 21 years okay 21 years now remember in a previous video I told you that when his dad George Bush senior was president there was desert storm under him and then there was the Iraqi Afghan war for 21 years well wars generate money for the rich and powerful but like I said George Bush senior when he was president we were four trillion dollars in debt okay it probably started way before that but I bet you it was pretty close to the desert storm war then you had the Iraqi operation Iraqi freedom that war lasted 21 years, and there is actually a show on Netflix, uh, Netflix called Turning Point. You can actually listen to that guy talk about the amount of money that we've wasted over there. Trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. I don't know if it was wasted or if it got sent back to the pockets of these lobbyists who basically control everything. Um, because you see the same thing with the Ukraine war. Uh, they're just sending pallets of cash over there, $2 billion on a wire transfer every month. And the United States is currently $37 trillion in debt now. $37 trillion in debt. Starting with the first George Bush, George Bush Sr., Desert Storm. All the way to now, thirty-seven trillion, thirty-seven trillion dollars in debt. Okay, so I want you to think about these numbers that I was just telling you. Does any of that make sense whatsoever? I mean, like I said, 
2,977 people perished, and that is horrible. That is disgusting, and I can't even fathom all of the people who lost their lives. And the people who lost their lives afterwards because of asbestos and all of that stuff. The man who owned those buildings got the largest payout from an insurance company ever in history. Billions of dollars were paid to him for those buildings coming down. Not only that, but trillions of dollars were wasted on a 21-year war countless lives lost in Afghanistan and Iraq all because of a system that was created for you and I to make sure we knew we were free and that we had a say it was created for us now one of the men who was in charge of creating this freedom Thomas Paine he's got several books you can read them was arrested because after he started helping create these documents realized that the federal government was going to use them for their gain and he was imprisoned uh, another gentleman who tried to stand up around these times was guy fox who literally remember remember the fifth of november the gunpowder treason, treason and plot i know of no reason the gunpowder treason should ever be forgot that gentleman these people knew what the plan was they didn't want no part of it and there's people today who know what the plan is and don't want no part of it and those people are silenced and shut down you're not allowed to talk about it because these people who are in charge of this system that I just told you about want to reduce the population by 80 percent because us peasants are getting out of control again we have the numbers and they don't. They don't like it. We also have cameras. We also have phones. We also have a place where we can talk about things. They don't like that. They don't want you to find out all of the stuff that is going on behind closed doors. So, those are things to think about. Like, like I said before, let me know what your thoughts are on this. Do you think any of it is accurate? Do you think I'm on to something? Do you think that I am totally out and far left and it's not even close to accurate? Let me know. Let me know in the comments because sadly I think that uh, there's a lot more to it and like I said we could talk about it for a long time. Um, let me know your thoughts and let me know do you want me to do the reading of the Constitution aloud or do you want me to do it live uh or obviously allowed <laughs> duh <laughs> do you want me to do it live or just pre-record it and then let you guys listen to it at your own will let me know in the comments have a good day and i'll see you on the next video